Hello everyone, welcome to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society's first Friday pub session for June. I'm Richard Goslin. I will be your pub landlord tonight. Or should I say, I will be your cocktail lounge host. We are getting into the kind of summer mood this evening and we're delving into the world of long drinks, cocktails and getting a wee bit more experimental with our whiskey this evening. Whether you've uh, you've tried cocktail or whiskey or not before, We've got some brilliant ideas for you. So what have we got coming up? We've got uh, drinks writer, cocktail queen, Inca Larissa, joining us to give us a guide into how to get the whiskey drinker into the world of long drinks and cocktails. We'll be hearing from master mixologist, Jason Scott. He is one of the powers behind uh, Edinburgh Cocktail Institution Mothership, which runs the Bramble Bar, uh, Lucky Liquor, and the, the Last Word Saloon in Edinburgh, real institutions uh, in the city. So he'll be joining us later on with some very intriguing cocktails that he's been working on in collaboration with the Edinburgh Royal Botanic Garden. And we're going to be getting into a kind of cocktail lounge vibe with jazz singer Ali Affleck. Many of you will know her from the vaults and from previous pub sessions uh, where she performs in the vaults with the Whiskey Trio uh, so she's going to be set in the right mood for the cocktail lounge this evening. So hope you've got your tall glasses, your cocktail shakers, your muddlers ready for something a wee bit different tonight. Uh, as always, give us a shout out about where you are, uh, what you're drinking, how you're doing. Let us know what's going on. But uh, I hope everyone is doing fine. First of all, let me introduce my co-host for the evening. It is Monique Ten Kortenaar. She is a society ambassador for the Netherlands, but not only that, she is head distiller at the Balls, the cocktail specialists in the Netherlands. And I think one of the one of the oldest distillers in the world, Monique, is that right? Yeah, uh, at least one of the, but yeah. Apparently Good. it's uh, the oldest, but yeah. Good stuff. Have you got a cocktail already in your glass tonight? Yeah, I actually have a, a dark and stormy, uh, so with ginger beer, yeah. Right. Very nice. Right, yeah. we're, going to be, we're going to be catching up with you to find yeah. out more about balls and about the world of whiskey and cocktails. But we're going to kick off with some music to get us into the lounge mood with uh, Ali Affleck. Ali, great to see you. Lovely to see you all as well. Uh, yeah, good to so see you. So, so we, we, we've heard your music before in the pub session and many will know you from uh, your regular appearance at the vaults, obviously pre-lockdown, but hopefully we're going to be uh, hearing live music again fairly soon. But you, you're, you're going to get us in the kind of uh, cocktail lounge mood tonight, Ali, right? I'm going to do my best. I've prepared a little selection of songs that most people will know and um, they're just really nice and kicked back and perfect for having a little whiskey over. And I'm going to start, um, if, if I may, uh, with okay. one that you'll recognize from a, a film. That's all I'll say about that. Here we go. <laughs> It had to be you It had to be you I wandered around And finally found That somebody who Could make me be true can make me feel blue and even be sad just to be glad thinking of you mm, some others I've seen I never be me Might never be cross Or try to be boss But they wouldn't do mm. 
For nobody else gave me a thrill With all your faults I love you still It had to be you Wonderful you It had to be you Just to be sad, thinking of you Some other I've seen It might never be me Might never be cross Or try to be boss But they wouldn't do Nobody else could give me a strength Oh, with all your faults, you know I love you still It had to be you Wonderful you It had to be you <laughs> so that of course I'm sure you recognize from uh sleep was it sleepless in Seattle? I believe it was sleepless in Seattle. Um and that was the theme song used in it. Harry Connick Jr., of course, did that version. I'm gonna hop along to our next song which I think will take us uh, uh, to complete the first set. And this is another classic song, and it's called Louisiana Fairy Tale. And it's one of those beautiful songs that Fats Waller used to perform and was very closely associated with. And it really paints a beautiful picture of Louisiana. So if you've ever been there, you'll find yourself feeling in the mood. And if you're there right now, then lucky you. You can just look out your window. Louisiana Fairy Tale with my virtual band. 
The dew is hanging diamonds on the clover. The moon is listening to the nightingale. And while we're lost in dreams, the world around us seems like a Louisiana fairy tale. The breeze. Is softly singing to the willows as hand in hand we stroll along the trail. And love is at its height, enchanting us tonight, like a Louisiana fairy tale. Oh, is this real? This fascination are my arms holding you fast. Are we here on this plantation? Or could this be heaven at last? Oh, keep dreaming your head up on my shoulder. Don't awake until the stars grow pale. The world is at our feet. The picture is complete. Like a lazy and a friendly tale. Here 
on this plantation. Fuck others be heavenly and let's go. Keep dreaming with your head up on my shoulders and don't awake until the stars grow pale. The world is at our feet, no, no, the picture is complete. Like a Louisiana fairy tale. Like a Louisiana fairy tale. Oh, like a Louisiana fairy Thank you very much. Thank you. I hope that was nice and relaxing way to, to get things moving and um, two very, very nice songs there. Thank you. Beautiful, Ali. And we'll hear Thank more you. from you uh, coming up a little bit later. Thank you very Indeed. much. Thank you. See you. Great stuff. That's getting us in the mood, Monique. Yeah, I couldn't sit still, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. So, thank Monique, thanks for joining us tonight. I think you're you're ideally placed to, to talk about the kind of crossover between the worlds of whiskey and cocktails. You know, you're a whiskey ambassador for the society, but you're a distiller at Balls, which uh, obviously produces so, so many liqueurs and cocktail ingredients. So how, tell us a little bit about your work and tell us about how you see that kind of uh, crossover between whiskey drinking and uh, and cocktail drinking. Um, yeah, so I'm actually um, based in Amsterdam um, in a small distillery. And um, what we do, because we cannot make like the complete products um, in, in that distillery, but we make the heart of the products. So um, we make uh, distillates that are used for the liqueurs. So for instance, orange peels, um, also for like uh, amaretto, we have like um, apricot kernels uh, that we distill. So the flavor, the flavor components from the natural botanicals is actually what I um, what I am producing uh, most of the time, and helping with the development um, sometimes as well on new products. Um, um, of course, I'm not making whiskey because uh, at this moment, Bols is not making whiskey. Um, but um, I think there's a lot of um, uh, overlap between um, Geneva and whiskey in this case. So, like the process of the of the fermentation is uh, is actually the same. Um, yeah, I think. Um, if I look at the cocktails and the uh, liqueurs and also whiskey, um, the thing is, whiskey on its own if, is of course because otherwise I wouldn't be a whiskey ambassador. Is all yeah, awesome I would say, but it's maybe yeah no I I like it a, a lot and I think there's already a lot to uh, discover in whiskey on its own, but. Using some liqueurs and with some, uh, like for instance, uh, citrus notes or more floral notes, will lift some part of the of the whiskey, or um, yeah, enhances them, or even yeah, I don't know, blend uh, nicely with the whiskey. And I think uh, if you use them in a cocktail together, uh, you can have like a complete different experience but um of course also a nice experience um so it's nice to have not only whiskey on its own uh, neat but you can do a lot of stuff with it so i think that's um really interesting yeah, I think, yeah. And from your point of view do you have any any preferences for cocktails any kind of go-to cocktails that you, that you think with whiskey or certain flavor profiles of whiskey just work well. Anything that you you really think just uh, just works fantastically well. Yeah, it, it depends. We had like at one point I I don't remember uh, the exact name of the of the um, 
products, like of the, the flavor, but it was um, one that was aged in a rum cask. And um, I actually took it, I, it, we had a like a kind of short film on it uh, a while back. Uh, I took it to a friend of mine that's a bartender in a five-star hotel. And he's also Scottish. And he used it to make a bramble. And I was actually really surprised because normally the bramble we don't use um, whiskey for. But because of the, the rum um, like finish, or it, it worked so beautifully. So, um, yeah. In, in, in general, of course, there are a lot of classics that you, you, you can use with, um, with a lot of uh, whiskies. Uh, of course, with the penicillin, you normally use like also the, the peated um, versions. Uh, but you can do more. And sometimes I'm really surprised um, at how it turns out. Like, for instance, with the, the bramble. So if you take like a more like sweet, almost raisin-like uh, profile, then that works also really good. Do you, do you think there's been a, like a kind of shift in our, our tastes? I think maybe cocktails used to be traditionally uh, more savory, but we've, we've, we've kind of developed a sweeter tooth. Is that kind of what you've been seeing through your work? Mm, yeah, that could be. Um, yeah, if, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure which ones you are uh, referring to, but... Um, I'm not really, I, I, I see myself, I don't really have a um, specific uh, sweet tooth. But yeah, there are like, um, uh, at some, it depends also to which bar you go. And, and like, for instance, you have a lot of tiki bars, of course, as well now. And that was, um, most of the time it was rum based. So all those um, sweet uh, cocktails were more like, used for rum based or like uh, tequila based or whatever, like more the tropical ones. And now you see that more and more in, in other type of bars as well. So maybe, yeah, in that case, I think, uh, yeah, that's one of the things that I noticed. Okay, well, we're going to bring in uh, Inca Larissa. She is a drinks writer, blogger, and you know, re you really write a lot about cocktails, Inca. Thanks for joining us in the cocktail lounge pub set tonight. Great to I see you. Yeah, yeah. What, what have you got in your glass tonight? Cheers. Cheers. Um, I have a burnt martini. Nice. Mm. Tell us about that. Well, that's a very easy way to bring scotch into cocktails if you like martinis. It's basically a gin based martini. Um, but instead of uh, vermouth, you use beaded scotch. Peatier, the better. Um, so it's really nicely balanced. I, I really enjoy it. Plus, also, I wanted to use my new cocktail glass. <laughs> Looks fantastic. So you've yeah. written a piece for uh, Unfiltered this month, new issue out uh, today. And you've kind of looked at um, how to kind of convince dyed in the wool scotch drinkers people who might never consider putting anything more than a you know a couple of drops of water in their in their precious whiskey uh, to try and kind of overcome that uh, that yeah. sense that there's, there's there's much more to discover out there so you've written a really good piece for the magazine which uh, you know I, I urge everyone to explore but tell us a wee bit about your approach in terms of kind of opening your mindset and uh, exploring longer drinks and uh, and cocktails? Um, well, I think when you work with gin and rum, you have all these cask uh, strength um, spirits that you use in cocktails regularly, like Negronis and Martinis and all, all that kind of stuff. So then why not use scotch? It, it should work the same way for whiskey. And there's such a wide variety of, whiskey categories that you can really play with even simple like I think keep it super simple just two or three ingredient cocktails um, and classics you know they classics for a reason um, like Rob Roy is a scotch version of Manhattan um, really nice if you like Manhattans normally or if you are a necroni drinker um, but even something super simple for the summer like the highball um, you can really 
you know, when you're sampling whiskey on its own, but if you just use soda and maybe some garnish, you can still sample the whiskey and really taste it in a different way. Um, and obviously it depends on kind of if you use soda with loads of long lasting bubbles and, you know, it, it's a really nice way to explore single molds, I think. Um, yeah. Got a question, got a question for you. Uh, from Whiskey 101, do you have a favourite whiskey that makes the best highball or, you know, from the society's point of view, uh, a, a favourite flavour profile that you think works uh, particularly well? Uh, I think something a bit more drier and spicier, I think. Spicy and dry? Yeah, spicy and dry or maybe even something a bit floral. Um, and I think sometimes also highballs, they can be a little bit too... Mm, like not sweet enough for some people who they like you know sweeter whiskies or sweeter cocktails but you can always bring sweetness using a tiny bit of sweet vermouth or white vermouth um, or even just a flavored syrup or ginger liqueur or something like that um, but I think the dry and spicy works really well and also with even with ginger beer um, I think it's nice yeah nice and I think, you know, whiskey, you, you wrote about in, in your feature for Unfiltered, you wrote about how whiskey traditionally was much more commonly used as a, as a base ingredient in cocktails. But then maybe it was the industry that became a little bit precious about how we should drink our whiskey. And that's kind of had a, a knock on effect that uh, there is this reluctance to take something that, you've, you know, you've spent quite a bit of money on it and you're going to put it into a long drink or a cocktail. But that wasn't always the case. No, well, I think during Prohibition, obviously, there was a lot of whiskey coming from Isla to the US. And then during Prohibition, it was obviously you had to hide everything. So they would just muddle loads of fruit, like orange and all sorts of fruit to kind of cover the, the taste. So it was kind of a way of, it was an old fashioned, basically, um, but much, much fruitier. Um, so you just wanted to cover the smell. Um, but then, yeah, I think also when the quality of scotch kind of came better, um, people just stop using it in in mixed drinks. That maybe you know, and a lot of it, I'm, I'm sure, came from the distillers from themselves that they just think it was a little bit too precious to to be mixed and kind of wasted um, in that way. Yeah, Obviously, I actually no, sorry, sorry, yeah. On your I was saying, like, I actually had some um, colleagues, uh, cal colleague distillers, that said, like, they shouldn't use my spirit in a cocktail or a mix because it's a shame and uh, the product is too good. And I said, like, I know actually a lot of bartenders that can make you a drink that you would really, really, really like, and uh, with your product, and it won't be a waste. But still, um, some people are still a bit hesitant about it. Yeah, I think it's also about personal taste, um, yeah. obviously, a lot. But, you know, if something has been aged for a very, very long time um, and gone through different casts and stuff, maybe you don't want to mix that too much. But there's a lot of 12-year-old whiskies, you know, 15, 18, um, and blends, obviously, uh, that lend themselves really well for cocktails. Yeah, true. So you, you, your advice, Inca, is to kind of start out at least by keeping it simple, three ingredients maybe. Uh, so what are your kind of go-to cocktails to, to kind of get people started? Um, sour. I love a good scotch sour. Um, and I, I like more peaty and savoury uh, whiskies. So they work really well. Like in a, just a basic sour with some really savory peaty whiskey, but just a touch of elderflower syrup or elderflower liqueur works really nicely. Um, and like, yeah, this burnt martini is super easy. You know, if you don't want to waste the scotch, you really only need like 10 mils, 12 mils. So you're not wasting it, but you still get the flavor um, if, you, if you like martinis. Um, and obviously, yeah, the highballs. I actually came across with this really nice recipe. I haven't tried it, but it sounds really good. It's called, let me see, cheat quickly, uh, set the new year on fire. 
<laughs> and it's basically um, mojito, but instead of rum, they use scotch, Baltimore 12 year old, and a touch of Campari. And I think it sounds amazing. Fantastic. And, you know, we're, we're getting a bit of warmth at last here in Scotland. So, like a, a, a nice, refreshing long drink, whiskey based long drink. Yeah, highball, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you can really because when you change the different like into different whiskies, you know, different styles, you get so much more out of it. Like maybe some, you know, you try something, it doesn't work, you're not quite happy, but don't be defeated. Just try another one. It's just simply soda water that has good long lasting bubbles, keep the glass chilled, and then you know, slice of lime, orange, sprig of rosemary or something. Very yeah, nice. experimental and kind of try some different things. Uh, any other top tips for for people who may not be as uh, as familiar with cocktail making or, or mixing up the drinks? Hmm. Um. I think well, there's loads of videos obviously now online and on social media that you can look at little tips on how to do stuff. And just if you have the right kind of glass, some equipment. But like I said before, just keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yeah. Don't try to do what they do in bars and stuff, like too complicated and just, you know, go with something that you already like, like the Negroni or something, and then just start swapping a little bit. There's you know? Bob asking if, uh, if, if, if we should kind of have a, a, a selection of base ingredients ready to go, uh, just, to, just to have, have to hand anything that you think that are essential to have in the house. Oh, well, gin, obviously, like a good London dry. Um, I would always have tequila um, and poncho or like a triple sec. Go through it well with, you know, margaritas, sidecars, if you like cognac. Um, yeah, you want kind of a couple of liqueurs and some uh, bitters and sugar syrup. Obviously, you make yourself, so it's super easy. But I would just have all the basic spirits. And a couple of liqueurs, and you can really do a lot with that. Brilliant. Some lemons. Oh yeah, yeah, fruit, fruit, definitely fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a selection of balls, liqueurs, maybe, Monique. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm not promoting balls now, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can. We have triple sec as well. <laughs> yeah, but well, you yeah. mentioned mentioned the amaretto earlier. So Godfather, yeah. Godfather is the Scotch and amaretto. <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's cool. Good, good. Well, uh, Inka, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. raise my old fashioned. And say <laughs> thank you very much and cheers. Cheers. Okay, good stuff. So that's Inka's input, Inka Larissa from On the Sauce again. A great blog and a really nice piece for Unfiltered this month. So I think we're ready to go back to Ali just to get us back into the kind of jazzy. Vibe, right. Ali, are you ready to go? Can't quite see you, but I think you're just about there. There you go. Let me just plug this back in. Sorry about that. I forget what this is. It's a new computer, so I'm trying to get used to where things are on it. No worries. I don't think you could hear anything I said just like <laughs> No, no, we had to no, but maybe the quality wasn't it's, good. It's a new. Yeah, it's a new setup, yeah. so I'm kind of fingers and thumbs with it. Um, but yes, set? I'm ready. I am all set. So we're going to start off another um, this set with another one of these classic songs that was used in a movie. And for the life of me, I can't remember. Um, if anybody knows, give a shout out. It it had um, oh gosh, I can't even remember the name of the actor now. But it was about an aviation guy who died. But it's a rather cheesy song for that kind of scenario, but um, I hope you enjoy it. Here it comes. Et voilà. <laughs> me how I knew my true love was true I of course replied 
something here inside cannot be denied. That someday you'll find all who love a blind. Oh, I, of course, reply, something here inside cannot be. To think they could doubt my love, but today my love has flown away. I am without my love. I cannot hide So I turned and say When a loving flame dies Smoke gets your eyes Does anybody remember the name of the film that that song is? And I'm going back a little bit here. I'm not in my 20s anymore. It's a film. I'll Holly Hunter, I believe, was in it. And um, thank you. The Netherlands is fantastic. I'd like I'd prefer to be there right now, in all honesty. <laughs> um, but yeah, if I remember the name of the film, I, I, Smoke Gets New Eyes is a classic. Of course, the Platters did a beautiful version of that. But um, 
I quite enjoy Diana Washington's version. If you ever get a chance to hear, ah, that's it, Aviator. I knew it. Yes, that's it. Thank you. That was going to drive me bonkers. A um, bit of a cheesy film, but there you go. But I suggest you, if you like that song, go and listen to Diana Washington. She absolutely rocked that song in, and added a little bit of her own flavor, which I sometimes take on board with that song. Sometimes it's scary to add too much flavor to a sort of ballady type song, but um, Diana always knew how to do it. I'm going to do another one for you. And this one is um, a little, it's a little more upbeat and I hope you enjoy it. Billie Holiday is uh, the, the, mass, the mistress, the, the queen of this song. It's called I Only Have Eyes For You. A one, two, a one, two, three. A star is out tonight I don't know if it's cloudy or bright Cause I only have eyes for you The moon may be high But I can't see a thing in the sky Cause I only have eyes for you I don't know if we're out in a garden Or out on a crowded avenue Well, you are here, so am I Maybe millions of people walk by But they all disappear from view Cause I only have eyes for you Fantastic, Thank you. Ali. Really nice. That's beautiful. I'm sorry, we've got, we've got Leslie Harrison lowering the tone. She sang the SO Blue advert version for the first verse. I don't know what that means. Any idea? SO Blue advert. I'm not sure. What um, I'm sure you're not lowering the tone at all. Uh, what, <laughs> what year was that? It's always about years because I tend to remember it was it a wee while ago. Um, yeah, if you can remember when that was, it was an advert, wasn't it, on the telly, if I remember rightly. Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't remember that one. We've got Ralph saying perfect music to accompany his old fashioned thank cocktail. Thank you so and much. And and stuff. just before I go, what what a beautiful message in that song. Being so in love with someone that you don't even know if the moon's out or if there's millions of people walking by. Perfect. Isn't that just the perfect, perfect thing? Leslie, I'm sure I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stuff. try and get yes, thank you. We'll see you shortly, Ali. See you shortly. Good stuff. Great. Right. Let's move on, Monique. We're going to bring in Jason Scott. He is one of the powers behind Edinburgh's mothership, which runs uh, the Bramble Bar, Lucky Liquor, uh, the Last Word Saloon, the, the 
they sell li liqueurs and uh, ready-to-go cocktails as well. Uh, they're, they're all over it. And the society this month is collaborating with Jason to create floral cocktails for June. We're getting into the summer mood uh, and working with the Royal Botanic Garden, Jason. So Jason, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Tell us about the collaboration, what you've been working on and what the results of the, the collaboration are. Yeah, well, um, thank you firstly for having me. It's, it's good to be here. Um, yeah, we um, it's an interesting project. We're working in conjunction, as you said, with the Royal, Royal Botanic Gardens with um, uh, Dr. Greg Kenisa. I hope I pronounced that right, Greg, if you're, if you're watching, um, as well as the Scotch Mountain Whiskey Society um, and trying to sort of um, focus on more sort of, sort of summary, um, longer drinks perhaps, something more refreshing, a little bit sharper, um, but also looking at whiskies that have um, prominent floral notes as well. Um, so no whiskies in particular, but more just floral play, uh, profiles and, uh, and, and trying to complement those with the cocktail. Um, maybe bringing new drinkers to the whiskey market perhaps. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's been interesting. It, it's always a, you know, a game of Jenga um, with ingredients and whatnot. Um, you know, the approachability of sort of uh, flavors, um, the availability of products. And, and although we got to spend so much time with, um, with Greg at the Botanics, um, you know, there's only so much that we can do when working with those, um, those floral aspects and those, those herbs and whatnot, um, which we've done. So, yeah, we came up with three cocktails, uh, which we did a wee training session this morning with the staff at Queen Street, which was great fun. Um, and, you know, I think they went down well. Um, I, I guess Bruce is going to be in the pudding when uh, when the the the, the, jet, the 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 members and whatnot get to taste them. So yeah, yeah, it's gone well. Um, we so tell us about the cocktails, Jason. What what have you come up with? In so yeah, so, gardens. so we've got three drinks. We've come up. Um, we've tried to sort of um, as opposed to come up with entirely um, uh, innovative um, concoctions. We're very much basing it on twist on classic. So there's still a connection there. There's a there's a hereditary. Um, there's a there's a line there that maybe people connect to. Um, and one of the, the one of the drinks is a Collins um, or a style of a Collins. And a Collins traditionally was sort of gin, lemon juice, sugar, um, soda water, um, served long over ice, nice and refreshing, um, and, and great for summer drinking, great for summer sipping. Um, uh, it's very much balanced. It does have those sharp edges, but a, 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 for, for a twist to bring in those floral aspects and, again, to sort of accentuate, um, you know, the flavours that we're working on, honey, lemon um, and whatnot, even Turkish um, coffee and things like that. Um, there was sort of measures or aspects. So we, we, used a, um, uh, we used a sorrel syrup, um, which we simply infused sorrel into a standard sugar syrup. A sugar syrup is simply... Uh, one part sugar to one part water um, and we just inf infuse the sorrel into that and it brings a real sort of tanginess and sharpness to the to the drink um, and helps uh, it just helps it be a little bit more fresher and a little bit brighter I, I guess um, so just a wee twist on that we also came up with a version of a penicillin um, I don't know if you've heard that it's quite a popular probably a, what I would refer to as a modern classic um, and that is uh, uh, that was invented in New York by, by, by a fellow called Sam Ross um, at Milk and Honey um, and is now reproduced all over the world. Um, and especially in the Scotch whiskey industry, it's got quite a, quite a following because it has, um, I think originally it was a Highland whiskey and also a peated whiskey in, in, in the cocktail. Um, and in there we've got some ginger syrup. Um, we've got some fresh lemon juice. Um, we're using some lavender to, to, to bring some floral notes and whatnot. And then we sort of top that um, with a little bit of peated whiskey. So that comes in a rocks glass, um, and it's it, it's sort of it's great for that Scottish summer because it's it's good for winter, it's good for summer, um, and who's who knows what you're going to get in a Scottish summer. So um, that works pretty well. Um, and the last one is we've done a done a twist on a julep. Um, a julep traditionally is done with bourbon, um, fresh mint, a little bit of sugar, sometimes bitters, um, but we've introduced some lemon verbena syrup. Um, again, it's just a stock syrup or, or sugar syrup um, infused with um, the leaves of the lemon verbena plant. So again, it brings a sharpness, a brightness, a, a tanginess to the drink, which is um, 
which supports that sort of fresh mint flavor as well. So yeah, yeah, just trying to get sort of um, maybe bridge the gap for for people who don't want to drink straight whiskey or, you know, uh, as we all know, when you're drinking cast strength whiskey as well, you tend to get a little bit of palate fatigue sometimes. So it's nice to sort of maybe break that up. And as opposed to maybe just having a beer, you could have a refreshing cocktail instead. So um, yeah, yeah. There's, I think there's plenty of scope for for, for, for most palates there. Okay. If, uh, can I have, uh, ask a question as well? Uh, sure, Richard? please. Um, uh, if you look at your own bars um, um, and the cocktails you serve there, um, what type of cocktails do do you sell the most, or do you um, yeah get asked the most? Or? I think um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, we still, I mean, in the UK, still very much the gym the gin boom is still a thing. Yeah, uh, I keep every year saying that it's then it's going to decline, but it doesn't. Um, which is fine, you know. Gin's great; it brings a lot to the party um, when you're, you know, when you're mixing it. So, you know, it's um, it's probably more of a promising base spirit than, say, vodka is. Um, mm -hmm. So it's something. But um, I mean, in our bars, we're very whiskey focused. So, the people that come to our bars tend to be fairly knowledgeable. Um, they're fairly adventurous. Um, uh, innovation is strong within our company. You know, we're sort of 14, 15 years young. Um, and, and, and we tend to use every technique possible, every trick in the book to try and, you know, bring a flavour to the fore. And, you know, we use everything from vacuum distillation with rotary evaporators to centrifuges to, to, to all manner of ridiculous um, science-based equipment um, just to get the purest of those flavours to, to accentuate what it is we're trying to achieve. But, I mean, our bar... Bramble is our oldest bar, is our first bar. Um, so the the drink that we get asked for the most is the Bramble cocktail. Again, a modern classic. Yeah. Um, the drink is so good, we we named our bar after it. Um, and that is gin, lemon juice, sugar, um, or crushed ice, and then you have a cap of creme de mur or blackberry liqueur. Um, but we're saying that. I mean, probably, oh, probably seven or eight years ago, what we started to notice. This is when I used to bartend, um, so I can tell you firsthand, but. What we started to notice even then, maybe even earlier than that, was um, the amount of women that would would ask for whiskey cocktails, which was such a relief um, because we were there was a there was a gap that was being bridged there, which is really really important, and cocktails can do that. Um, and it's not to say that that, that 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 women don't like you know strong spirits or, or or whatnot, but we just noticed it more and more. So that in itself is really refreshing, um, and it's part of the program that we're trying to do with Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. But yeah, old fashions very much. Negronis are Negronis have become the drink of lockdown. Um, we also do sort of uh, takeaway cocktails through Mothership um, online cocktails. Um, so yeah, yeah, the, the Negroni has become a thing. You know, previous to that, everybody would screw their face up when they when they heard about Campari, and now everybody can't get enough of it. Um, so it's an interesting turnabout face, but uh, yeah, I think I don't know. It's strange. It's almost like everybody's palates have matured uh, in twelve months or something. I'm not sure. But. They could practice a lot, I think, as well. <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of practicing going. Yeah, on. yeah, I can definitely say firsthand from from my behalf. And there's that joke, isn't there? It's uh, you know when customers are coming into the bar and they're asking for a whiskey and you give them twenty five mil and they're so used to what they've been pouring at home. They're like, where's my whiskey? What's that? Yeah, is that it? <laughs> where's the rest of it? Jason, got so, a question from Bob. We're talk, talking about maybe acquiring a taste. But what was the strangest cocktail you ever had or maybe even created? Uh, and did you have to grow to like it? I, I, I found that with Negroni when I first tried it. I was like, oh, that's just a bit too bitter for me. But yeah. it's something you kind of grow into. Uh, so any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, I mean I've asked, I had so many requests for, what perhaps would be considered a bizarre request I, I don't know but you know we we've we've made cocktails with seaweed um we've had um we make cocktails with popcorn and um which has now become quite a common thing um you know people will bring in their favorite chocolate um to the bar and say can you make me a drink with that type <laughs> of scenario so you know it's um we'll do our damnedest to to appease the customer ultimately if they're paying for something they can have it any way they want and i guess that uh that uh that reasoning is is especially true to to, to the modern 
way we should drink whiskey, I think, is that, you know, however you want to drink your whiskey is up to you. You know, you shouldn't have to drink it straight or on the rocks. You can mix it and, you know, enjoy it the way that you like, depending on who you're with, the time of day or the location. So It sounds also that there's kind of scope for a bit of foraging for your ingredients. You know, obviously you've been working with, as you say, Greg uh, Kenneser from the Royal Botanic Gardens. And I saw that he, he's got a book, uh, Scottish plant lore, and he, I think he explored how plants were traditionally used in Scotland in different forms of distillation. I think uh, like a uh, form of heather was used to make beer, and you, in one of your ingredients, you're talking about using gorse to infuse in in, in one of your syrups. Uh, right. So, so maybe there's an opportunity here to to go out and and explore nature and do a bit of foraging as well. Absolutely. So it's a win-win, isn't it? Let's be honest. But um, it's interesting. Our, 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 our fruit and veg supplier is, uh, he's an astonished, they're an astonishing company, astonishing people. They're always so helpful. And we talking about bizarre requests. We, we ask a lot of them, you know, we sort of say we need, we need oranges, but they need to be this size and they're for juicing or they need, we need the, the skin, not the juice. And we have the strangest requests. And I asked him about supplying some gorse and he was like, nope, can't get it. Um, so it is literally going to be one of those things where I'm going to have to walk up Arthur's seat with a with a Tesco bag and and and, and fill it up um, because we need it. We're doing a we're doing a bottled cocktail um, for the society um, with uh, again sort of a Boulevardier um, style cocktail, which is essentially a, a, a whiskey version of a Negroni um, is the best way to put it. So we've got our we've got our Scotch whiskey, um, we've got our Campari, Campari, our bitter aperitif, and we've got sweet vermouth, and we're actually infusing the Campari with gorse. Um, and that sort of brings a, a, a real sort of coconutty um, um, nuance to it. Um, I don't know if some people may have had like um, a gorse sorbet before, which kind of tastes a little bit like um, Malibu. Um so it's not as pronounced as that, but it's a nice sort of su subtle hint of coconut um, and it just changes up the drink as well. So again, we've got some long refreshing cocktails that we produce and then we've got things like this bottled cocktail, um, which is, uh, it's more spiritous and strong, uh, more spiritous forward, more whiskey forward. So uh, yeah, something for everybody there, I think. But yeah, the, the, the foraging part, it's, I, I don't have much choice. I'm going to have to get my boots on and get up get up Arthur's seat so well there's plenty of gorse around at the moment you know if you all you need to do is step outdoors anywhere yeah. with some countryside and uh, plenty of gorse and the smells are fantastic you know you go past a gorse bush and it, it is this big waft of coconut so yeah why not use what's on our doorstep absolutely absolutely and and, and deal, you know speaking with greg and you know his knowledge was phenomenal um it was an absolute delight we went there uh, mid-morning it had there'd been a sprinkling of rain and the place was just the aroma was mind-blowing it was gorgeous i mean it was such an enchanting place um just after the rain the, the aroma um the colors that had come out and um i mean it's making my has my arms uh, stand on end it was really that good it was incredible and and greg's knowledge is is phenomenal um had a wee cheeky, a uh, few bits of cheeky information about um, things that turn into hallucinogens and, and all that type of stuff, things that you shouldn't have. Um, let's put it that way. So, uh, but uh, yeah, what, what, what a lovely, kind, knowledgeable, charismatic man. Um, and I look forward to doing some more work with him in the future. It's been a pleasure. I want to hear more about it. <laughs> these. Oh, you've got, you've got to take, you've got to take a couple of hours of walk with him. I mean, we only really had an hour and a half, two hours. I could have spent the whole day there, and we we rushed as well. It was a bit of a power walk to get around, but what um yeah, it was it was amazing. Brilliant. Uh, so it, it, I mean, we asked Inca the same question earlier, but any kind of tips from your point of view, Jason, in terms of uh, a whiskey drinker kind of moving into the world of cocktails? You know, how how to get started or how to kind of overcome any inhibitions or, or fears about uh, about getting into that side of things yeah I, I think first and foremost is to not not dumb the con consumer down I mean people know what they like um, so ask them you know the first thing is you know would, you know if you if you want a cocktail do you want something spiritus do you want something sour um, do you have a sweet palate you know um, are there certain fruits that you like? Do you want a long drink? And yeah, you know, there's a certain checklist that you've got to run through. I think you know that, that's what we do as bartenders anyway. 
um, to sort of narrow it down. And, you know, 99% of the time you'll get it right. On the odd chance, maybe you won't. But, you know, it's it, it's still a conversation point nonetheless, and then we'll make them something else. But, um, yeah, I think ultimately work out what you like. Um, and if it is your, your, your first foray into to whiskey cocktails, then, you know, potentially – I think somebody mentioned a sour before. Um, sours are great because you can sweeten them up as you want or sour them up as you want. It just it's, it's about balance ultimately. Um, and don't feel compelled to to put in fifty ml of whiskey straight away. You can start with twenty five. It can be you know it can be a light whiskey cocktail. Um, you don't have to go the the, the, the full hog and, and definitely don't put in more than fifty ml of, of whiskey um, for any reason actually for one drink um, because that, you know you want the you, you want to you want the party to keep going um you know so yeah too too much of a good thing could uh, end pretty quickly but yeah it's about balance and the drink um yeah i, I mean i you know we, we, we've got a julep uh, on the menu that we're doing obviously with the society and and i that for me is you know it, it straddles the sort of spiritus and 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 also the the the, the palatable and quaffable um it's really fresh it's you know it, it's menthol but not in a terrible toothpaste way it's fresh and it's vibrant and i think the julep is a great drink um i don't you know going to limb and say that's probably even better um, with scotch whiskey than it is with bourbon fantastic there's silka agreeing that foraging is a delight uh, so yeah and and you know you obviously use like you mentioned some very very high-end equipment some some really advanced science in, in your co in your cocktail making but for those of us at home what what are the basics what do we need to get started um you need to well, what you need i guess is you need to try things um and the best place to try those things is in a bar um because you can buy a bit of this and a bit of that to taste and whatnot and any good bar will actually just give you a taste if you say what's that taste like can i can i try some um but you know, if we're talking about whiskey particularly, um, you need a good sweet vermouth um, and you can spend anywhere from seven pounds to 27 pounds on a, a bottle of sweet vermouth. Um, you need bitters, Angostura bitters and orange bitters, I think. Um, you need a good fruit supply, um, whether that be lemons or limes or mint, whatever it may be. Um, stock syrup, or we call stock syrup or sugar syrup. You can, you can do a cold, um, use a cold method where you can just put equal amounts of sugar and water in a bottle and shake it up and that will give you instant sugar syrup or you can put it on a hob um, and, and do the same measurements but just cook it on a high heat and that inverts the sugars um, without getting into the science of it. it makes it a little bit more viscous a little bit more richer um, and helps with mouthfeel as well with your cocktails so um, yeah that, that's probably where, where I would start um, you really don't need a lot more than that to get going um you don't want to over invest in something you're unsure about anyway um so yeah bit by bit but like i said a bar is a great place to to learn about what you like and bartenders love talking about what they do um they're uh you know they're, they're on a stage for a reason to be honest um but yeah they, they, they will hand over any knowledge that they have um and quite happily do that so yeah ask your bartender too Great stuff. Well, uh, we look forward to trying your creations. They are going to be available at all of our members' rooms. I think different cocktails at different members' rooms. If that's in that's that, London and Glasgow. That's correct. Yeah, there's going to be one allocated per bar, um, and then we've got an event coming up. I think towards the end of the month, where we'll, we'll showcase two, two of them. I, I believe. Um, TBC. Um, TBC. But, uh, TBC, but yeah, um, but yeah, that, that that's the way it's going to work out. So good opportunity to maybe go to all three and try them. Yeah, definitely. Okay, brilliant. Uh, Jason, thank you very much for joining us. We've got a quiz coming up, which is all cocktail related. So I would expect that you're going to get full marks if you stick around <laughs> and you want to do the quiz. Uh, we'll put you to the test, but uh, we'll bring the quiz up just now. But thank you very much for joining us, Jason. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Good stuff. Right, Monique, ready yep. for some cocktail questions? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I am, but you, you should be getting 10 out of 10 as well. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, same format as usual for the quiz, Mul multiple choice. We've got 10 questions. We'll reveal the answers as we go along. Uh, and 
you can take part in the comments with whatever your answer is. So we'll just kick off. And uh, do you want to take us away, Monique, with the, the first question? Yeah, that's OK. Um, so what was the signature cocktail of Jerry Thomas, author of the um, 1862 book, How to Mix Drinks? What's that? The Blue Blazer. The Tom Collins, the Martini, or the Whiskey Sour? Now, I guess uh, all cocktail uh, experts know about Jerry Thomas, so uh, they, they probably know the answer to this one. But it depends how, uh, how knowledgeable you are about the cocktail, your cocktail history. Okay. We've got Lauren and just... with D, the whiskey sour. Leslie, Alexandra. Well, Leslie's going B. D, Lee is D. Ashwant is B. So we're all over the place a wee bit with this one. Should we reveal the answer? Yeah. Darwin with B. Where am I? There we are. Yay. The blue so, blazer. Yeah. The blue blazer. What yeah. can you tell us about the blue blazer, Monique? Uh, well, the blue blazer uh, was invented um, by Jerry, as it is. It was said, um, which was uh, actually uh, made by lining up a whiskey and then, yeah, actually throwing it back and forth, and then you like, if you do it like this, you get like a um, whole, um, yeah, flamed stream. Um, of liquor, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever tried it? I I had it, yeah. Actually, I I, I always see it when I I'm always going at, like um, I used to go to a bar next uh, to the distillery, and um, you see a lot of especially tourists asking for for a blue blazer, and I always enjoy the people like filming it and like really being like, oh look. It's quite a spectacle. We've got some great photography in Unfiltered because we've done a piece about uh, about Jerry Thomas and what an, what an interesting character he was, uh, and some good photography of uh, of someone making a, a blue blazer. It it does look spectacular. It looks yeah. fairly dangerous, and uh, I, I don't know how it works when you're in a busy bar. Uh, and so uh, maybe health and safety issues there, but it does look good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Moving on. Uh, question two, what ingredient gives the pink lady cocktail its color? Is it Angostura bitters? Is it B, grapefruit juice? Is it C, grenadine? Or is it D, pomegranate juice? We should probably bring Jason back in here. Jason, do you want to come back in and join in the, in the pub quiz? Right, let me... Let me uh, Add you in. Here he is. This is a this is a walk in the park for you, Jason. Oh, <laughs> you say that, you say that. Yeah, yeah, not really, not really. It's been a long time, but uh, yeah. So I, I, I'm one for one so far. So yeah, good start. Oh, one for one so far. Uh, okay, the answer's coming in. Well, the, the majority seem to be going for C, grenadine. So uh, we can reveal that the correct answer is grenadine. Grenadine made from fresh pomegranate juice, reduced with sugar. There you go. Right, Monique, over to you. Okay, the daiquiri is named after a beach in which country? A, Cuba, B, Jamaica, C, Nicaragua, or Puerto Rico? Three for three with this one, Jason. Yeah, th th there's a lot of um, mystery mythology um, surrounding a lot of cocktail culture and etymology. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even, sh yeah, uh, this is debatable as to whether it's uh, even, even a fact. I think bartenders spend a lot of time drinking their concoctions and not writing stuff down to record it. So, <laughs> I think a lot of it got lost in the uh, in history. But uh, yeah, I, I've got a fair idea. Okay, well. 
most uh, seem to be going for A, Monique. That's the right answer, yeah. A. Yeah, and I think it's that there is a bit of a story behind it. As you say, Jason, it's maybe like the whiskey world. There are a lot of long tales which, uh, you know, get get lost in the telling in terms of how true they are. But, uh, yeah, it was apparently a, a, a beach uh, near Santiago de Cuba. Supposedly, it was uh, – the Daikini was – was named by an American mining engineer working there in the late 19th century. They don't know what that one. <laughs> okay, question four. What's the second ingredient in a rusty nail along with whiskey? Not the most sophisticated of cocktails, I wouldn't think. A, amaretto, B, cognac, C, cointreau, or D, dram buey. I don't think you're selling too many rusty nails in your bars, are you, Jason? Um, I mean, it's very much a winter drink. Yeah, you get asked a, a, a little, no, not a lot. No, the answer is no, not really. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be polite, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, my memory of rusty nails, or my introduction to a rusty nail, was on an overnight ferry journey from Aberdeen to the Shetland Islands, where for some reason it seemed to be the drink of choice and uh, the rusty nails kept going all night and then the ferry arrives like at eight o'clock in the morning uh, having gone overnight from Aberdeen and I've never touched a rusty nail since it was uh, <laughs> quite a, quite an off-putting experience shall we say uh, so I think most people are going with with D Drambui uh, and yeah it's, uh, it's it's basically whiskey with whiskey isn't it I mean Drambui is a whiskey liqueur it's 40% ABV, so a, a, a rusty nail definitely packs a punch. Right. Uh, you want to take a question for us, Jason? Sure. Um, good one as well. What was the dude's go-to cocktail in the Coen Brothers movie, The Big Lebowski? A, am I, am I reading out the options here? Yeah, on your own. Yeah, A, Bloody Mary. B, Dry Martini. C, pina colada. D, a white Russian. Do you know this one, Monique? Yeah, I know this one. It's a classic. A classic, indeed. Let's see, and I'm coming in with any answers. Is that Torben in with a D? Leslie's in with a D? Yeah, too easy. Way too <laughs> easy. There you go. White Russian. Uh, classic three ingredient cocktail, vodka, coffee liqueur, and cream. Any variations on that, Jason? No, no, cream, <laughs> cream cocktails, um, just no. Just <laughs> <laughs> straight forward. But uh, Jeff Daniels' character, uh, obviously, he, he I, th I think they were kind of out of fashion, weren't they, until. The big Lebowski came along and it kind of reawoke our our love for the White Russian. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, he did uh, did for White Russians what Bond did for Vespers. So, um, yeah, absolutely, and I mean, there's now bars in Glasgow called after it and whatnot. So that's yeah. it. Good one. Right, Monique, over to you. Okay, the piña part of the piña colada refers to pineapple. What does the colada part mean? A cubed. B chilled, C strained, or D tinned. No, I wasn't sure about this one. I I, I don't know. Honestly, I've, I've no idea. I guess most people know the piña part is is pineapple, right? But the colada part maybe a bit trickier. I was actually thinking it was uh, about the, the the creamy part, but apparently it's not. <laughs> I should have put that as one of the one of the options. Might confuse people a bit more. <laughs> well, we're getting uh, we're getting B's and C's. Yeah, but the correct answer, Monique, is it's A. Uh, oh, sorry, it's the strength. Yeah. See, strange. No, on my list, oh, no, there was like A from answer, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you it. 
Strained, yeah. The yeah. strained part refers to the freshly pressed and strained pineapple juice that's traditionally used, not out of a tin or a or a carton. Yeah, okay. But maybe that's easier in Puerto Rico than it is in Scotland. Right, Jason, what over to you? Want to read this one? What plant is used as an ingredient in the spirit absinthe? A juniper. B fever tree. C mint, D wormwood. Interesting. This one came up with uh, Greg at the botanics. So, yeah. Did you work with any of these? Well, we ended up using mint, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. The worm, the wormwood discussion was uh, was quite interesting. Um, yeah, this is where the where the discussion of hallucinogens came in. So, yeah. Ah, okay. Well, you're giving away a clue there. I'm here to help. <laughs> I oh. actually use this one as well. Ah, okay. In the distillery. Okay. So, yeah, the, the correct answer is wormwood. Uh, what, what do you use it for, Monique? It's a kind, yeah, it's a, a mixture between uh, wormwood and anise. So, it, it has a bit, like, wormwood already has a bit of anise, like, flavor to it. But we combine it with uh, star anise. And we have a spirit that we sell in the south of the Netherlands um, as a kind of, yeah, spirit. But yeah, it's mainly those two ingredients. Okay. So it's something similar to absinthe? Yeah, a bit, I think, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Because absinthe, it's got a bit of a reputation. I mean, it was banned in the US and I think in parts of Europe in, yeah. for a large part of the 20th century because it, it supposedly had harmful psychoactive properties but you know and, and i think we associate it with uh, vincent van gogh and uh, some, some of his episodes maybe but i guess you would have to you'd have to consume a hell of a lot right yeah yeah you have to <laughs> i really never I, I i actually i actually went because um if we use it it already um uh, milled so it's like really fine dusty uh, stuff and I'm only worried about the bitterness when I have to weigh it in because it's really, really, really bitter if you, uh, yeah. And as, if it's fine dust, then it's even worse, of course. But I, didn't, I never had problems with, uh, with any of the other uh, mentioned stuff. You didn't feel like cutting your ear off or anything? No, 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 no. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. Jason? Where do real maraschino cherries come from? A, Cuba, B, Croatia, C, Italy, D, Malta. This could be a trickier one. Did you know this one, Jason? I think so, yeah. We, we, we make our own maraschino cherries in-house, so... We'll order about 175 kilos of cherries um, every year, cherry season at the peak, um, and then we just make our own through um, a, a slow preserving system and low heat and whatnot, um, which is pretty time consuming, but they're pretty tasty. We do some some in bourbon, we do some in maraschino liqueur, um, yeah, just depending whatever takes our fan fancies or whatever's laying around on, on the on the alcohol front. So yeah. yeah. Well, everyone seems to be going, most people, I should say, not everyone, but most people are going for C. Ashwan is on, on B. And the correct answer is, in fact, B. Croatia, uh, named after the Maraska cherry, which grows on Croatia's Dalmatian coast. Uh, and the cherries are, are preserved and sweetened. So, so real maraschino cherries come from Croatia. But I suppose there's... There's a big market. You can, you can take any cherry and, and and sweeten it and preserve it. So, uh, but to be a genuine maraschino cherry, it should come from Croatia. Okay, Monique. Okay, where does the cocktail penicillin get its name from? A. It's said to cure your ailments. It's um, it includes penicillin. Um, C, it has a dryness like crushed aspirin. Or D, it's a hot toddy. Yeah, 
easy one. Yeah. That's Leslie saying she drank a lot of Maraska when she was in Croatia. Okay. First fills in with D. Lawrence is saying a C. It's got a dryness like crushed aspirin. Gary's saying it cures your ailments. Okay. We'll reveal the answer. Monique? Yeah, A. It's said to cure your ailments. Yeah. Made from whiskey, ginger, honey syrup, and fresh lemon juice. Uh, you referred to it uh, earlier, Jason. It's uh, it's become a bit of a modern classic. Very much, yeah. Sa Sammy, who created it, has um, he's got quite the quite a palate, quite a knack, and he's made quite a few cocktails actually, which I'd say would probably qualify as modern classics. But uh, yeah, yeah, he's incredibly good at his job. Yeah, and, and whiskey based, right? Sorry, what's that? Is it whiskey based a penicillin? Yeah, whiskey based, but I, I think originally I can't remember. It, it may have been Jewers originally. I, I hope I'm not incorrect in saying that. But it was um, it was essentially I, I think a, a blended whiskey, and then there was a, like a um, a, a peat of smoky whiskey as well, a smaller amount. So yeah, I drink this one actually. Uh, yeah, a lot of times. Yeah, nice. Okay. Jason, you want to round us up? Last question. Sure. Our bartender, Anthony Del Cross, is that how you pronounce this? Del Crow. Del Crow, thank you. Oops, sorry. Has created a Brigadoon for our Glasgow members room. In what region is Brigadoon? A, Highlands. B, Lowlands. C, Speyside. And D, it doesn't exist. Okay, let's see. You ever been to Brigadoon? I've heard it mentioned in a song. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I don't know the answer. Monique, any idea? No, no, I know the answer now, but uh, I wouldn't have guessed it. <laughs> yeah, well, we're actually, we're getting a mix. We've got Bob saying D, Lawrence is B, Ashwan is D. Okay. We've got some takers for uh, for the lowlands, but the correct answer is, oh, excuse me, that it doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, Brigadoon was a film from 1954, a Hollywood film, I think a pretty terrible uh, kitsch Hollywood movie. And it was about a, a Scottish village that only appears for one day every 100 years. It was a love story uh, set in that one day that the village appears. Uh, but it's, the, the, the name is similar to uh, Brig Odun, which is a real place yeah, yeah, yeah. Rabbi Burns used in, in Tam O'Shanter, his most famous poem, uh, where the horse Meg uh, goes over the bridge, uh, at the, the, the river Dun, the bridge of Dun, uh, and the witch uh, is trying to grab Tam and pulls the horse's tail right out of uh, her rump. Uh, so that is the Brig Odun, but Brig Adun doesn't exist. Okay. So there we go. And I should, uh, let me find uh, our cocktail. There you go. It's the Brig Adun cocktail with the uh, ingredients by Anthony Del Crow in our Glasgow members room. And I bring this up because uh, we've got, uh, I think we've got nine cocktails that our our, uh, our bartenders have come up with uh, across our members' rooms, and you can read about those in Unfiltered this month. Good stuff. Right, let me move that out of the way. Jason, thanks for taking part. So was it 10 out of 10? Definitely not, actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be easy for you. Uh, good stuff. Good fun. good fun. Right, thank you, Jason. Uh, great to see you and Thanks we're going to cross over to Ali for our final set of the evening. Ali, you ready to play as I am? I am. I was listening intently to that. That's really interesting stuff. Um, education, yeah. education for our whiskey Definitely. audience. I love it. It's stuff I didn't know. I'm quite interested in all of this too, obviously. So um, interesting you mentioned Absinthe and Van Gogh because uh, the song that I'm going to start this 
final set with. Um, it's called Stars Fell on Alabama. So you could kind of use that as a brig to this song. <laughs> Take um, yeah, here we go. Alabama's not a romantic place, but this song certainly makes it sound like it is. a little drama We kissed in the field of white And stars fell on Alabama Last night You know I can't forget the glamour Your eyes have the tender light And stars fell on Alabama last night All my imagination A situation So heavenly A fairy land Where no one else Could enter And in the center There's just you and me My dear my heart beat like a hammer My arms wound around you tight And stars fell on Alabama Last night And stars 
very much for all the lovely com compliments and yes i think you should have another drink this is perfect music for having a little drink too um that of course was stars fell in alabama um i am going to close my set with uh, another very well-known um oh thank you leslie uh, another very well-known song from New Orleans. I lived in New Orleans. I am an American and a Scot. So I'm kind of, I try to get the best of both worlds. Um, and of course, Louisiana is a place close to my heart. Uh, Alabama, not so much. Um, but this one is a classic one that um, all the greats have performed and you'll recognize it very, very quickly. I'll do a quick shout out to my band. Um, the band, the people that you're hearing, my virtual band, um, recorded this specially for tonight and um, it features Ross Baird on the guitar and Lick Lee on the clarinet and saxophone and our little band is called Whiskey Swing as an homage to of course the Whiskey Society. This final song however features another one of my um, collaborators his name is Steve Hamilton he's a phenomenal piano player as you're about to find out but I thank you all very much for having me in your rooms virtually this evening and here we go Voila. You recognize it straight away. Well, I found my thrill. On Blueberry Hill On Blueberry Hill And I found you And the moon stood still On Blueberry Hill And lingered until my dream came true The wind in the willows Played love's sweet melody But all of those vows we made Were never to be and now we're apart You're a part of me still For you were my thrill On Blueberry Hill Yeah, everybody sing along! Thank you. 
performing with my Acho band in person because there's so much more that happens as a jazz singer for you know 20 years now you feed off of each other and it's a lot of fun um, um and thank you very much i would like to mention and I, i'm allowed to do this thank you um that i'm going to be performing in the edinburgh jazz and blues festival and it's going to be online that means all y'all who are all over the world right now watching this could actually watch it um, I'm actually very excited about it. It features a five-time award-winning trumpet player called Enrico Tommaso, who sounds very Italian, but actually he's from Leeds. <laughs> so he's not that Italian. Well, obviously Italian ancestry. Um, and also a man called Ewan Bleach and Joplin Parnell. These are superstars of early jazz and blues. And if you're interested, go and check out the Edinburgh Jazz and Blues Festival. I think they're putting my concert out on the 17th of July. Fantastic, Ali. Uh, we will look out for that. And we look forward to seeing you at the vaults before too long as well. Oh, oh I cannot wait. Yes, uh, I know. Really Whenever it's ready, we'll be ready with bells on, believe me, and it's going to be fantastic. Thank you so well. much. Well, thank you for providing the lounge vibe tonight. It's been absolutely great. And with the people from across the UK, across Europe, South Africa was in there, so uh, really good. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much for inviting me along. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. We'll see you soon. Thank you. You too. You. Cheers, Ali. Okay, great. Well, that's us, Monique. Uh, thank you very much to you for joining us. I hope you've had a good time. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank great you. Great stuff. Well, we look forward to seeing you as well when you next get the chance to to come over to Scotland and Definitely. keep up the good work in the yeah. Netherlands. Yeah, thank you.
Good stuff. Okay. okay, great. I think that's us, folks. Uh, it just remains for me to say thanks to everyone that's joined the session tonight. Inka, Larissa, uh, Jason Scott, uh, Ali there, and of course, Monique. So what have I got to tell you? New issue of Unfiltered out today and we've got lots of great cocktail content as well as other whiskey knowledge uh, so dig into that uh, we've got a nice feature about father's day so if any of you are thinking about uh, father's day 20th of june lots of ideas and we've got a special home dining kit many of you might have tried the home dining kit throughout the uh, lockdown really and i know that we're emerging from lockdown but we've got a brilliant menu from our chef james freeman especially for Father's Day. That's going to be available from the 18th to the 20th of June. So check that out online. Give your old man a treat. Uh, we've got the June virtual tasting coming up on Thursday, the 24th. Packs are on sale now, £35, and a really nice selection of whiskies. And cocktails are plenty in our members' rooms, both from our bartenders, which you can read about in Unfiltered, the cocktails that they've come up with, and of course, uh, Jason's like next level cocktails that he has created with the uh, Edinburgh Botanical Gardens. So all that coming up, Glasgow members room open tomorrow. Uh, so absolutely fantastic. And of course our members rooms in Edinburgh and in London are already open. So we're back to business. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for tuning in on this nice, warm summer evening uh, in Scotland. Great to see you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for participating and uh, see you soon and stay well.